that doesn't get your competitive juices going, everybody. I don't know what is. Well, it's been five weeks. It's been 40 days since the last competitive stroke was taken in Duckrook. And now it's just three days to go and 16 hours to the start of the 2021 season. It's going to be epic. I hope you're ready. People have been practicing. You've got your goals. And I have my panel with me. We have Fats next to me. We have Coach Dylan, who's going to let us know how to conquer the season. We've got Donny, Series 1 champion, who's going to talk us through the marathon and not the race. And then we've got Ryan, who's going to explain all the updates from handicaps to stats. For us, everybody, say hello. How's it going? Good to be back. It's good to be back. And everybody on the chat line, it was great to see everybody joining in so quickly. Thank you for your hellos, everyone. Um, so stay tuned. We have a very, very busy show. We've got lots to talk about. We've got, we've got to set up the season with updates from uh, what events are coming, handicap changes, ranking points changes. Then we're going to look at Durban League. They started this last Sunday. We'll quickly jump in there and see how that went. And then we preview Kilani and Finally, we have a big announcement to, wait, to make, so don't leave us because you want to hear this announcement. Okay, so where do we all start, gentlemen? Where do we all start? We're going to start with the tour season. This is what we have, 33 events, and that it does not include majors, that does not include the classic, and that does not include the 36-hole challenge. 33 different courses. It's going to be epic, so we look forward to that, gents. Are there any specific courses you're really looking forward to playing? There's some new ones on the, on the calendar. Yeah, for me, Pretoria Country Club. We haven't played it in um, probably four or five years. I really enjoyed that golf course. Uh, first and only time I played there, so I'm going to really try not to miss that one. Um, yeah, and always, you know, courses like Ibotzi, Woodhill. Um, yeah, great to, to see them on the calendar again. Michalis Park is making a debut on the Duck of Tour. That's never been played before. Uh, the Eye of Africa, where the shootout usually is, and we are building up towards that in February. That is a league game, which is a new um, feature. Uh, what else? State Mines is new. So a couple of new courses for, for us to uh, go through. Very exciting, everybody. But what do we start with? We start with January, and we start this Sunday, as you know, at Kilani. We start at Kilani on the 17th. Then we, the Thursday series starts on the 21st, I can't believe. And then the 24th, which is Sunday Series 2 at ERPM. Of course, that we also haven't played uh, in the last two seasons, and we are looking forward to it. Right. You must be knowing, what are we playing for? Well, besides playing for um, um, pride, trophies, bragging rights, there are some credits that we give away so that we can... Fuel you for some free golf, hey, Fats? Absolutely. Um, and it's made life a bit easier with the app now as well. Um, we don't really have to keep track of the credits. Um, after the event, the, the top three guys will um, get the credits loaded onto the app onto their profile, which then they can use to enter any event, um, special events, um, you know, book cards, whatever they want to they want to do with the, with the credits. So it's, I think it's a, a great way to go. Yeah, something to play for. And while we're on the app, it's nice to finally have this app. And I think we need to give Ryan a round of applause because um, I think he shaved off the gray hairs because chatting to him in the last two weeks, he's been... It was a reason for a haircut today. <laughs> no, no. no I've seen the emails side, up and down. Like to... Talk us through it, Ryan. I'd just like to say... Thank you to everybody that's taken part, the support from everybody, the patience from everybody. Um, the emails have been flooding through, messages have been flooding through. Everybody is just patient and allow me to have the time to get back to them individually and everything. So from my side, I'd like to say thank you very much. But I must say from the app side that we're getting things going, we're actually tremendously excited. Once it's 100% complete, it's going to be magnificent. It's going to be great. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's going to be great. But yeah, that's looking good. Questions people have. Can I look for a guest? And I, I, I tell guys that you guys need to register a profile. Because once you register a profile, it pulls through to other things, right? And uh, it makes it so much more efficient. So don't think we're being difficult. If you have your profile, you do it once. Then, then it's done. So, uh, yes, be patient. Uh, if you don't, if you need a password or so on, we will help you. Just remember, Ryan does the stuff. 
So it doesn't help me sending me the message. It doesn't help sending Fats the message because we're just going to send it to Ryan. So if there's ever yes. anything to do with credit or the app, you let him know. Yeah, directly. That's yes, that's awesome. Okay, right. What's the next talking point we're going to have? Ranking points. There has been a change slightly in the rankings. Hopefully there's no COVID issues this year, so we don't have to drop the required amounts. So let's take us through it, Fats. Uh, yeah, so it's going to work uh, very similar to, to it did, uh, like it did in 2020. Um, we're going to be working the ranking points on average again. I think it worked really well. Um, it showed at the, the last event at Glendower with a tight finish with first and second. I think it was 0.45 points of a difference between first and second. So obviously we're going to keep that structure as, it, as it's working really well. Um, yeah, as you can see, this year we'll, we're having 41 events. Um, so we've upped the, the minimum games you have to play to qualify for the play of the season to 22 events. Um, we think it's more than reasonable. Um, it's a little bit more than half the events. Um, I'm sure the guys can make the effort to, to get there. And then, yeah, we've um, implemented the bonus point structure again, um, just for the guys who's not clear on it. So the, these points you get on top of your average ranking points. Um, so, for instance, let's say you've played 24 games, you've got an average uh, ranking points of 100. Once you reach 25, that average will go up to 110. Now, if you maintain that, if you maintain that until uh, you get, reach the 30 mark, so let's say you're on 110 average ranking points, you only get five extra. So it's um, yeah, it does say 15, but it's 15 from your calculated average throughout the season. Um, oh, yeah, plus 15. Um, so if it's not clear, you guys can, can ask us about it as well. Um, so it's basically just 10, and then you add another 5, another 5, another 5 for, for more events played. Um, and then we've had a long chat um, and discussed with quite a few of the regular Duck Hook Oaks um, regarding deducting ranking points as well. Um, so we do feel as well in the last two months of the season, um, we've got seven events while excluding the Classic. Uh, so there's six league games and then, of course, the Summer Cup in the beginning of December. Um, so we do feel you uh, have to make the effort to play at least four out of those seven games. Um, reason for that is um, if you're like leading or just second, um, in, some guys would not want to play events uh, in case their, their ranking average comes down. Um, so we don't want to force the guys, but we just feel it's fair on the rest of the Oaks um, that you make the effort to, to try and play four out of the last seven games. Um, so if you if you only play uh, three, you're going to lose five average points. Um, if you only play two out of the seven, 10 points will be deducted. If you only play one out of the seven, 15 points will be deducted. And if you play zero out of the last seven, we'll deduct 20 points from your ranking average. I think that's more than fair, everyone. I think it's more than fair. And yeah. just remember what happened last year. It came down to less than one point average at the end of the day. Which is, that's what we're looking for. I can't wait for the freaking spreadsheet. Yes, it's already done, most likely. <laughs> it's probably already done. He, he's on top of things. If anything goes wrong, he goes straight to Ryan and said, hmm, I should have so many ranking points. <laughs> okay. I, I think Fricky has I, I, got speed dial because he's there. quick. Yeah. So I, I can tell you guys, after the announcement, is like he's going to have a spreadsheet tomorrow. Yeah. Then I can tell you. <laughs> he will. He will. He'll have it tonight, man. Right. It's good to have a second eye on it as well. We are yes, going to I move agree. on to the handicaps. This has been a bit of a discussion in, uh, in the, lead, the weeks leading up to it. We've put it on our community group, got the thoughts. It's always nice to see what their opinions is. We take everything, we mill it over, and then we work it out because it's, it's not just implementing something because it's a domino's effect. So if you implement complicated things, then the poor guys sitting here have to now do all this complicated equations and so on so we're trying to keep it simple so this is what's happening and we'll get to the changes soon but for those guys who are new and you don't know how the handicaps work we'll do a quick recap so there's a handicap smithy and let me tell you these guys are like sharks they are on everybody's handicap so if you think that you're gonna jippo something you will be caught and we will name and shame you just kidding all right tournament Handicap is lowest of Saga and Duckhook. Handicap. So whichever is the lowest, you'll be playing off. For new players, your first round is of 80%. Complete rounds must be submitted to Saga. Scores entered late must be done with a penalty. You can't phone your club five days later and tell them to take a penalty off it because that's just not how it works. 
Even I have forgotten to put a score in and I have had to phone the club and say, please put this in and don't take the penalty off because it's our responsibility. When we become Saga members, it's our responsibility. If scores enters are late or incorrect or not up to date, when you're You'll be playing off scratch until it's rectified. And you don't want to be playing off scratch if you're competing for a title. So make sure it's really easy. You open your round and then you enter the score once we do it. And we do remind guys. Right. For non-official golfers, if you don't have a saga, I'm going to let um, Pats go through this. And Ryan, you can have your say. Yeah, so um, obviously this is just to, to avoid you know guys out there that um, we know go out to, to win golf days and he rocks up and he says he's a 16 and he shoots a 78 and wins the day. Um, so if you're unofficial, you'll play off scratch of your, of your first round. Um, but just to be fair, you get the, the field average of the ranking points um, will be allocated to you. Um, and then um, you have a Daku handicap uh, calculated after the first round. Um, and you'll play off 75% of that handicap uh, for your second round. And then after three rounds, um, we're going to take the, the best out of your three, and that's going to be a double handicap until you get to the to the six. Um, and then, yeah, the normal calculations will uh, carry on from from there. Now, this page is for uh, our like stats to, guy. So, Ryan, mm -hmm. you take us through this. Um, just want to add on to that 75% mm -hmm. of the handicap with fats. Um, going forward, even if the guy that does is not affiliated. You must remember, he'll always play off 75% of his duck hook handicap. It's not just a first or second round thing. It'll always be 75% of the yeah. duck hook handicap because it just seems fair that the guys pay for Saga membership and then this guy doesn't. So we've got to sort of try and even it out. Okay. Yes. Go through the duck hook calculations then, for us. Will do, will do. Just one more second just on the submitting of the scores. Um, just one explanation as to why it is important to submit your scores on the day that you play. Because South Africa has now also gone into the world golf um, rules and all that nonsense, you must get the playing conditions calculation. So it is imperative that you submit on the day because if you go and submit two or three days down the line, the playing course conditions can be different. So it will take the calculation of that day that you've now submitted but not the day that you've played. So that can also uh, have an effect on the day's handicap calculation. So it is very imperative to submit it on the day. I will be very strict on checking that as well, and you will be penalized if you do not submit. I also am not going to babysit people. It is your responsible responsibility to submit, please, guys. Then, Maz, we can go over Brian, to the handicap calculation. Brian, can they, can they submit their scores on the app? Yes, there's, a, yes. there's many ways. There's an app there's, uh, that you can do it on. On the internet, the, the portal's there. there. At, At the, the course, there's terminals. You, you can, can find find your club course and ask them to submit it for you. Even on that day, you can go and contact your course and say please submit if there's any issues or whatever um there's many ways of doing it. if you don't know get in contact with me i'll help you all the way that i can um there's so many ways of doing it so there's really not an excuse to not do it Boom. Yeah, I mean, I think when, you know we, you, most guys should be having a beer after the round and just sitting there and putting their score in while you still at the golf course 100 exactly, exactly. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, you know, guys, it's easy. You know, it's like every time I play, you know, it's like literally before the round, I open it on the app, you know, I open my round app, and then basically as soon as I'm uh, walking to the car, you know, basically it's like to put my bags away after the round, I can put it in. You know, so it's really so easy to get the app. And how long does that do take you? What's that, though? How long does that take you? Oh, jeez. Like a few seconds. It's literally it's like... Like my phone has got facial recognition, so it goes into the app, boom, Bob's your uncle, I put the score in, it's yeah. 10 seconds max. 100%. Okay, let's get to calculations. Um, there's, uh, there's been a few, lot of questions and everything, whether it's new members or existing members or regulars or everything. On the website, the calculations are there, but we're going to just run through it quickly. So how the duck handicap works is, out of your last six games that you play, your best six differentials that you get, that is where your handicap is calculated from. So now we've got a, a nice example here. So in this case, now the guy's got his last six differentials, which is 11, 16, 8, 17, 15, and 10. His best three then is 11, 8, and 10. And then the calculation there, you can see the little formula there. It's 11 plus 8 plus 10. The average of that is divided by three because you've got the three scores there. Then that's times by 96%. That's really as simple as that. It's based on your IS points. Um, <coughs> With that, you'll see on the right-hand side, the example there, player A scores 40 points. What we do there is your round differential, which we've now just spoken about 
is calculated 36 minus your day's points that you get plus your handicap. The reason why we take 36 points is because on the 36 points is what you play exactly to your handicap. doesn't matter what your handicap is. If you have 36 points, you've played to your handicap. So there you can see the example there where that first example there is round difference is 8. And then there's another example on the right-hand side there. And then to keep in mind, we've got exceptional triggers as well. Um, as soon as you score 40 points or upwards, then you get exceptional trigger, which then with one exceptional that you have, it will be times 90%. If you have more than one exceptional, it'll be times 80%. Sure. So to avoid two exceptionals in a row, there's been some guys who've done it. <laughs> it just goes whack, slashed. And this, it's going I mean, to tie in to this next graphic I'm putting on. So I'm sure you understand what's happening. So handicap changes for this season. Right. I'm going to read the top line because that was the talking point. A big discussion. The max handicap will remain at 30. And why is that? Is because we are capping off a three shots similar to Saga. Saga have a three shot soft cap. We're implementing something similar. Take us through the rest of it, Ryan. Okay, so that cap that we've got, it will be your duck hook handicap. Um, when the committee discussed this, we had a little bit of a miscommunication because we used incorrect terms and stuff. You are still out of the day that you go and play. You'll play off the lower of your duck hook or your Saga handicap. After that day, your duck hook handicap is recalculated because you just played for that day then whatever that duck hook handicap is, that's where the cap comes in. Um, so you, it's, you won't be able to say, for example, your handicap, your lowest handicap is 10 that you've had for duck hook handicap, you'll not be able to go higher than 13. Um, new players, we had to try and say, because the new players not play 80% on their first round, it's a bit unfair to say, well, that's your lowest handicap. So we've now uh, added that to that after four rounds. That usually, after four rounds, is sort of an average starts even and out what your duck hook handicap is to what your ability is. Um, so after four rounds, then that will kick into effect. Um, players cannot go higher than that three shots from the lowest handicap calculated. So for example, if you start in January with a 10 handicap, you cannot go higher than a 13 handicap for the remainder of the season. But say you've been playing excellent and June comes and your lo new lowest now is nine, then you won't be able to go higher than 12. So that's just to say that's the three shot maximum that you can be able to go to for the season so that's how we've calculated to keep in mind we're not going to backtrack so guys don't have to worry about that it'll start off from on season now in january onwards and it'll go on like that yes well done. Uh, can you put the graphic for us again you want the same one or do you want the new one uh just give me the same graphic at all doesn't see how far we are okay the band there can it change is. see if i've covered all the points there we go yep Pretty much uh, no, they examples. Just, just examples. I okay. Don't know. I Ryan's got some examples for you, but he's going to go through this as fast as possible because we're running out of time. So here is yes. the first one. Go. <laughs> okay. So what I've done is I've just put a little bit of an example here. Maz and I will do a little video later on, so I'm going to go very quickly through this. This is just to show how the calculations and that happen. So this guy has now started. He's new at Duck Hook. He plays. We've got a Glendale event. He plays over 14 handicap, which is his... His Saga handicap is 18, which 80% of that is the 14.4, but it plays off the 14. It gets 26 points. With a little calculation, that, um, with the differential there, you'll see how it calculates. Then if you go off to three rounds, it will be the best one differential out of the three, dif the best differential out of the three games that he's played. Uh, um, all this will be on the website as well. So then you can have a look and see how his handicap has been. From his second round, he's played off his 18, which would have been his lowest out of the two. As you can see on the right side, his duck handicap is 23. When he plays five games, it'll be the best two out of the five differentials. There you can see on the right-hand side, his duck handicap is 22. But he's, in this case, his saga has been lower. He's capped at 25. Then we can go to the last slide there, Maz. When he's played his six games, there you can see the best two out of his last six that he's played. Uh, there's a little formula that you can have a look there. In the, this one, what I've done is his last round, he's got 40 points, so he's now had an exceptional trigger. So now you can see with the calculation at the bottom, it's now at 90%, not 96% that his handicap is calculated. So now his duck hook handicap is 19, and he's capped at 22 for the remainder of the season. So there's very quickly gone through that, but yeah, we'll submit the other one there. And breathe. Well done, Ryan. <laughs> thank you for working that all out for us. Very good. And thank you for the. Thank you for the comments saying well done on the new handicap system but like everything we've got to see how it works and how it all pans out yeah. so that's pretty much 
a build up to what to expect this season. So now we're going to move on to get to the interesting stuff, which is the golf. Uh, let's start with the Durban League. Let's uh, give them, they started first, so we are going to quickly show you who the winner was. They played at Salburn on Sunday, and Russell Hine won on two under. Great to see a two under score. Jack Lamp and Craig Van Dyke minus one, and then a big gap to plus three. Four guys finishing on plus three. Aslam Andrew, Andrew Ashwin, and then on eighth, Mar Marius, and then tight ninth is Luke and Andrew Castle. So congratulations to those gentlemen. Um, we've tried to up our game in regards to Durban, and we have somebody who puts together a little news video for us. So we're going to jump away, go to the news video, and see what happened at Selborne. Enjoy. 2021 finally dawned on us, and even though not a lot has changed, at least the second season of Duck Hook Golf is in KZN, teed off on the 10th of January. On an overcast Sunday morning at South Coast Golf Estate Selborne, 16 eager golfers took to the course, with sponsor Guano Boost on board. Uh, yes, this is now our second season going uh, in Durban. We started today at Selborne when it was a bit blowing. But yeah, great, great to be back on the golf course again. Due to COVID-19, last year was a bit of a battle, but yeah, started strong off today. Got 16 players, so yeah, good to be out again. Um, today we actually got a fertilizing company that's sponsoring our prizes. They're sponsoring longest drive, closest different, and the top five prizes for us. So yeah, I'm actually glad we got some new prizes to give out as well. And you are the defending series champion. So, do you feel any pressure? Yes, there is always pressure defending your title in any league game. So yeah, hopefully I'm going to start today off strong again. Yeah, no, not too good. <laughs> in third place was Craig, he's a new member of the side. He's a new member, he joined up this week with us. Of a 12 handicap, 37 points. And we lost on the gun back to second place. And second place is Jack Lamb playing off a nine, also making 37 points. And then in first place, second time playing with us, his first time was at Toki uh, Golf Course last year, playing off a seven handicap, shooting a 77 today making 38 points, Russell High. Russell, you will be getting yourself 400 ranking points going to the end of the year tally. You will get yourself 400 credits, so that you don't need to play for the next round. Glenwood boy Russell also took home a hectare's worth of guano boost for the longest drive, as well as the book and a duck hook cap for closest to the pin and will be hard to beat this year if he plays throughout the season. Hey Russell, well done on winning. Thank you. You've got a, a lot of prizes to take home. Yeah, yeah it was uh, not easy in the win, but I managed to pull through. And uh, how old are you and what's your handicap? I'm 17 and I play off the duck hook, I play off a 7. And uh, you recently actually played at Selborne in a junior tournament? Yeah, I played the Gulf Forest Eight tournament, I finished 33rd out of 90. And uh, what are your plans for the future in terms of golf? Uh, obviously, go either go to America or something like that to play golf. Okay, great. And uh, if you need uh, anything to grow, you've got plenty of plenty of fertilizer here. I'm sure your dad will be happy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the February game is uh, the second weekend in February, and it's going to be at Mukumas Golf Club. And just name some of the other courses that we'll be playing over the year. Uh, so we will be playing the Mount Epscomb again, some BT, Clueth. We got a new course, Beachwood, that's in into the mix in March. First major will be the 9th of May, and we're looking at hosting it at Durban Country Club. Well done, this is the Durban guys. Thank you for the video, uh, Brandon Brash. Um, very nice to have somebody with the skills to be able to put something together for us, so we can keep in contact and up to date with the Durban gentlemen. Right. The time has finally come. Sunday is Kilani. We look forward to playing. Currently, we have a field of 90 golfers who are going to tee it up on Sunday. That is awesome. Thank you so much for everybody that has entered. Um, we're going to get this season off to an absolute roll. So just imagine, beating 90 golfers is an achievement in itself. Cry. 
There we go. Let's recap who the winners have been over the seasons. This is now how many seasons? One, two, three, four, five, the sixth season of the Sunday League. Um, starting with who won the first one? Yaku uh, Hrobla, our resident Canadian. Uh, Vanna Baturis, and then Richard Stewart won in 2018. Donna Peramol in 2019, and then our special guest, Dani Galdanes, won in 2020. Well done, Dani. Both Sunday leagues was won Thanks. by a single point, if you didn't know that. So that's how close it can be. So you always got to be on top of your game. Donnie, I was talking to you earlier today at the Concepts office. And, and I was saying, I would like to know from you how to go about being a, how to go about a series, a, a 11 match series. Yeah, um, as obviously, um, you said the words uh, correctly earlier. It's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a, it's a marathon. And, um, you know, the thing is, if I take back um, last year, you know, like my goal was for every game just to go and shoot 30 to 31 points plus. You know, you're going to have your days where you're going to have a, a good round and you shoot like a 35, 36, 37. But it's just to eliminate those bad rounds. And if you just keep ticking over, keep uh, ticking over and ticking over, you know, by the end of the year, when you come to September, October, November, you know, that's when you can see where you are in the standing. And then you know, okay, geez, like I can carry on as per, per usual and shoot like my 33 points and I stand a good chance of, of finishing first, you know, or, or second. But but that's the main thing. It's just to get those low, low scores and the bad rounds out and just try and get set yourself a goal every round. 31 points is the minimum that I want to make. You know, it's like if you back yourself and you know your game is good, you know, you can achieve it. And that's that's what I did last year. Hold on. Donnie, can, do can you remember your, what was your average points for the season? Ah, oh, jeez, no. Um, I know in the beginning of the year, the first couple of rounds, I actually had a couple of good 36, 37, and I think 38 points. But then back from... Um, after COVID, it, it sort of dropped to 34, 33. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that I was averaging, you know, for most of my games. So, I, I would say it's close to 33, 34 points. Yeah, I think that's that the I had for the season. For the season, if you want to compete, 33, 34 yeah. points average. Mm -hmm. um, just remembering if it's um, your worst score does, does fall, fall out here, yes. you're allowed one bad round. But mm -hmm. yeah, like you say, uh, just consistency. That's the thing. Okay, boys, it's time to look at Kilani as a course. And we're going to bring a coach in here to talk us through how to get through this course. Now, if you didn't know, Kilani is tight. It runs over three highway off-ramps. And um, there's two par fives only, and it's a par 70. So for the big hitters looking for birdies and eagles, that goes away from you. So generally, it's a low-scoring track. 36, 37, 38 points wins. Hey, Dylan? Yeah, I mean, Kalani is a, a great and I think a slightly underrated track. Um, they actually hosted uh, Sunshine to a Q school there a couple of years back. Um, and it's um, it's fairly sort of straightforward. It's basically very small targets. <laughs> there's, no, there's no bailing out. You know, we'll move from um, Kalani to Copperleaf and you'll notice the difference at Copperleaf. You have very big targets, whereas Kalani is just small targets. You're not going to, your stats are not going to be great. Um, but you've got to be disciplined of the tee. Um, if you hit fairways, it's not the most difficult, but that's not a case of hitting drive. It's kind of designed to be, you generally want to hit the ball about 220 off the tee most of the time, um, and that's your sort of wider landing areas. Um, and when you do that, then you have sort of 140 in uh, to most holes. If you, if you try and bully it with a driver, it's going to be a long day. <laughs> um, you know, in, in summer, the weird thing in summer is that, you know, it's not a scary course, but you miss the fairway and you can't punch out because the rough is so long that you can't keep the ball low, but then but then you have to sort of not hit the trees that you're in. Mm. So, you know, how do you, I mean, it's literally a case often of just chipping out sideways and then hitting a wedge on the green. And there's going to be a, a couple of um, scenarios where a bogey is going to be a good score on, on a lot of holes. So... Pick, pick very small targets, you know, um, really be disciplined in those targets that you pick. That means off the tee, as I've just discussed, but actually the greens are very small as well. Um, so if you if you just come out of your shot a little bit or pull it a little bit or get a bit frisky on it, you miss the green and then you're chipping. Um, so it's going to be a day where you're going to chip and putt a lot um, and don't be frustrated with that and just pick really, really small targets 
um, and just try and accept that. And if you do that, you know, if you're less frustrated than the next guy and a little bit more mentally disciplined than the next guy, then that's probably what's going to win it for you on this particular golf course. We had eight of us Don't. go there on Tuesday. Sorry, Donnie, we just uh, paint a picture here quickly. We had eight of us go there on Tuesday. And pretty much what Dylan has just said is the case. The rough is rough, like this. So if you're in there, uh, you, you're not really going to get to the green. And most of the time, because it's so parkland tree-lined, you, you can't even go for the you can't even go for the green. Look at the first, for instance. If you're a bit left, stuck. Um, what other hole is there? If you're a bit right on the third, you've got a tree in the way. The par five fifth, which, which is one of our featured holes, which I'll show, must be the hardest stroke 18 around. Suit on the left, <laughs> out of bounds on the right. So it is very much course management. You were saying, Donnie? Yeah, um, I just wanted to do, to ask Coach there. Now, obviously for for all the golfers playing in a tournament, you know, it's like um, looking at course management. How are you going to um, prepare yourself for this event? So it's like take us a little bit through your course management or game plan that you're going to have. And then sort of like also maybe think about uh, sort of what type of handicaps we, we've got in the field. You know, what's the difference that's going to be for a course like management side for a high handicap versus a low handicap? Cool. If I, I mean, if I can just touch on those things just separately quickly, um, being being this time of the year and the first show of the year, um, I think it's a case of, you know, the same as your golf swing. You don't fix your golf swing on, on Wednesday or Thursday morning before the Sunday event. Your golf swing is going to take, you know, whatever it is, six months to really, really fix it. But you can start that process. Your putting stroke is going to take six months to fix, you know, but you can start that process. And the mental game is exactly the same, if not more so. So what you should have been doing is going, okay, new year and whatever, um, what can I do better? Um, part of that would be your mental game. What part of my mental game can I do better? And you've hopefully isolated what you think you can do better, whether it's picking targets or whether it's confidence or whether it's commitment or, you know, there's there's 20 things in your mental game, just like there's 20 things in your golf swing you can work on. And you just need to isolate those and go, okay, I'm going to work for argument's sake. Me in particular... Donnie, to answer that question, me in particular, um, I'm trying to work on being a little bit more, um, a little bit more definitive in what I'm doing and a little bit more committed. So instead of getting lazy and just saying I'm going to hit a draw, um, I'm saying okay, I'm going to draw the ball from the right edge of the green and I'm going to try and draw the ball sort of eight meters or seven meters or whatever it is, um, and I'm trying to commit to that process. Um, so that I don't expect to do. 90% of the time on Sunday, but maybe if I can do it 30 to 50% of the time, that'll be a good result. Um, and then between that, you hope for a little bit of luck, and then, and then you hope for your short game, game to save, save you the rest of the time. Um, as far as course management goes, um, I wouldn't say it applies differently to different handicaps in terms of um, how you approach it, but it does obviously apply tactically to handicaps. So what I mean there is, um, you, you know, know if, you, if, if you if you hit your ball in trouble, trouble um, whether, whether you're a scratch handicap or a, or a 30, 30 handicap, um, you should be looking at the shot in front of you and going, okay, okay can, can I get something maybe up near, near around the green, green or am I just literally chipping out sideways and, and then hitting it a wedge um, or, or a 9 iron, whatever, on the green. Um, the only subtle difference would be with the higher handicaps, you might say to yourself, right, hold on a second, I am a 30 handicap. Or, uh, or whatever it is. So this, to me, is not a par four. This is a par six. So I don't need to hit any type of drive off this hole. I can literally, I can literally hit six iron, six iron, chip, two putt, and that's going to be a five for three on my handicap. This is not a par four. Um, and unfortunately, the high handicap guys look at par four and they think I must reach the green in regulation. Well, that is true, but regulation for you is is four shots. Not two shots. Yeah. And, there, and there's a reason you have that handicap. You know what I'm saying? So the only subtle difference would be with the high handicaps is going, just be realistic and go, okay, I don't need to hit a long club off this tee box. Um, and, and Kalani is the perfect example for that. I've got a question from Leon from Ada. A very good question. The greens fast or slow? I like the pace of the greens. They're not overly fast, so fast, slow. but they, they they roll nicely and they're not too slow. I think I got them all past the hole comfortably. Um, it really was an issue. So you should enjoy it. Okay, let's get through some of the nitty gritty. Thanks for all the info, Coach and um, Donnie. 
First tee, tenthly, let's have a look at the people who are playing and then we'll move on to the featured holes. On the first tee, here we go, starting at 4 minutes past 11, I want to remind you that the app times are not always the same. And these are the times. Whenever you see this type of field, that is correct. Here we go. Uh, plenty. I don't even know where to start. I'm playing with Trevor it's Miller. Good to see another Bonner. fricky in the field. Another fricky, fricky I, stone. Yes. And Mornay. I, I know where to start, Mez. Yes. If I just may say, for a first time achievement, I know it's a duck hook handicap, but I'm playing off a single handicap this Sunday. Wow. I'm playing off a nine. Well done. That's awesome. <laughs> there we go. So there you go. You guys see your names in the field. Uh, look out for the player pack and you can see exactly where you tee off. Um, please always check before you come where you're teeing off the latest tee sheet because things change. You bring a guest and you want them to be in your four ball, then we need to move somebody out because we want to accommodate everybody. Here's the 10th tee. We've got Graham de Villiers, Graham, uh, Gerard Sneeman, Tian Schmulian and new Comer Brian Owen joining us, and they will be taking the field off on the 10th. That is the stroke one, so make sure you play that stroke one very, very well. Um, yeah, everybody is, if you, I'm not even going to go, there's just too many names to go through. I see Fats, you're playing with Peter, Barry, and Adam. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I've never played with Adam before, so um, that's going to be great. He's quite entertaining to play with, I must yeah. admit. Okay, let's do the featured holes. The featured hole of the day, which Ryan is going to get stats for us once this is finished, is going to be uh, the par 4 7th, which is the one with the water in front and uh, the little ravine in front. Um, turning into the hole, it will, be see, uh, it will be interesting to see how many people go for the green. It's, okay. It's a nice choice. Right. Closest to the pin holes, everybody. Um, I'm just coming close to the pinholes. It starts with a par three fourth. Always a difficult hole. Got to carry the water, um, take an extra club, and then you can't really go to the right because the water follows the green. Then the par three fourteenth is the other par three um, that has also got a bit of water in front of it. Not overly long. Um, yeah, straightforward. Then the closest in two is the short par four eighteenth. Uh, uh, You've really got to thread your drive. If you're trying to get down there, I don't think many players will take a driver, but you really got to thread and stand on the right side of the fairway because the green is kind of islandy, and I'm sure the pin is going to be on the left-hand side, tucked away to challenge us. Okay, so we've got some featured holes that I'm going to go through uh, that we got on, on Thursday, uh, Tuesday. And uh, up first was Simon Mayer, who decided to go for the par 5 Fifth. Here we go. My featured hole at Kalani is the par 5 fifth. It's a stroke 18, about 490 meters. Um, it's one of the hardest stroke 18 holes you'll find. What I love about this hole is because it's quite narrow, you've got out of bounds on the right and the salute on the left. It's a pretty tricky hole for, for players of all handicaps. You know, Even if you put a, a decent drive down, your second shot, you've still got the hazards both right and left again. And if you're too far right, you're under the trees for your third. As I said, has it on the right. Should be okay, but let's see. Okay, so we put it a bit right off the box, as we said we didn't want to do. Um, so we're going to try to punch it out, leave it down just before the water and give ourselves maybe about a hundred in. The green as well is a nice tricky green and it's protected by bunkers, so I really enjoy this hole. That is the par 5 fifth. That's only the only par 5 on that side. So uh, when you get to it, you'll know you need a great drive. Uh, you need a good second. You can't go left. There's water there as well. Um, I think a good score there is a four, uh, a 5 for many people. So if you get a 4, that's just a bonus. But I would play it as a par 5. Okay, then it was my featured hole. I got to the par 4 ninth, And uh, this is what it looked like. Usually we start by saying, my featured hole is, this time we're going to start by saying, once upon a time, here at Kilani, a young strapping man called Maz stood on the ninth tee box and needed a par to win his first Thursday League Duck Hook event. Yes, the ninth hole is my featured hole. It's a stroke two, very, very tight, and it's 400 meters. What makes it so difficult is that there's not much room to miss. If you hit a good drive, you probably have about 160 left into the green, which is got a bit of water in front of it which you also have to navigate so let me hit the shot and then when we get down to the bottom 
I'll talk you through my second shot to win that event. It's not bad, but that's pretty much the same spot I was in the last time. I had 210 left on that day, and today I have 210 left. As you can see, we look around this way, it's quite a carry because there's water on the right hand side. So, putting myself in that situation, I had to hit this shot on the green to at least try and make a four to win the tournament. And that's exactly what I did. So let's see if we can pull off the same shot today and reach the green with this uh, 210 meters. I actually don't know. I didn't hit it quite as well. So, uh, yeah. All right, as predicted, and very lucky, short, but not in. So this is number three. Let's see if I can put it close and still make this four. Damn indeed. I was so adamant to make that four. I didn't get it. But, you know, in golf, when the adrenaline's pumping and you know that you have to pull oh, the yeah. shot, that comes a long way in handy to get that extra 10 meters or so. But yes, <clears throat> one day I'll know what it's like to win a league game again. It's been a while, I'm sure. But we have 33 <laughs> opportunities this year to try and win one, and I'm, I'm adamant. Okay, one of our playing partners was Sorrel. Yes. As if I can just touch on that theme of force management again, because it's so prevalent at uh, at Kalani. Mm -hmm. But I, I hate to single you out on live TV, but, <laughs> but <laughs> that was not. I would have laid you, Just listen to you before and then and then during that video again as well. You just you just made two live mental errors, and the first one was you you explaining the part three nearest the pins, and you go, okay, there's a part three water, take extra club. I mean that's just. I mean, the, if you get to that hole, you'll realize that hole is 15 meters downhill. Yep. So what are you doing taking an extra club? Yes. You know? Not, That's how bad I'm playing, coach. Thinking. That's how bad I'm playing. I shouldn't be generalizing. I should just clearly. aim it at me. Correct. You're not thinking clearly. And then in that situation there, I understand what you're saying. You want to pull off the shot that you pulled off, whatever. Mm. But there's a lot of ways to make a four. Mm. And if you want to make a four to win, you have to understand, it's not being negative, but you have to understand that five you know, gets you in a playoff or a counter. Yeah. So you've got to take six out of the equation. Mm. You know, basically you should have had a better drive. Once you've had a poor drive, you need to then reassess things and go, yeah. okay, hold on a second. I've had a poor drive. I mustn't take on a shot 210 with water everywhere or mm. for side hill lie under a tree that we saw yeah. overhanging tree there. You know, you can, you can lay up to what is your best yardage and you go, you know what? My best yardage is 80 meters. I know 80 meters. I hit it on the green you know, 80% of the time. So as soon as you hit it there, that means you're going to have an 80% chance of having a putt for the four that you want. Yep. And you take all the disaster out of it. You know, you get the idea of the thinking that I'm trying to install here. 100%. And you go, okay, the, the area here was not taking on the shot. The area here was the tee shot. I should have hit a better tee shot and had a five iron on the green, mm. but I haven't. So now how do I still make four with my poor tee shot? Okay, I hit it to 80 meters. And from 80 meters, I hit it to 10 foot and then I hold the putt. And that's how you do it without ever making a six or a seven ever. And that's how we, that's why we have you on the shows to tell the people who are clever. And, that, and that's and that's not increasing your skill level mm. or improving your swing or doing anything. That's just being smart. Being smart. Mm. There we go. But coach, like you said something there quickly that uh, we also sort of had a train of thought for me now as well. Is where you said is like you know if you in trouble you lay up to a distance that you're comfortable and that you know you can pull off the shot. Um, repeatedly so don't you think also for the guys when they're standing on a tee box you know and it's let's say it's a, a short bar four which is 320 oh and it's very narrow that the guy should rather think okay well hang on i'm going to hit my nine iron very great you know so maybe i need to try and get um you know off the tee box let's instead of hitting a drive or fairway wood let's hit a five iron because that's going to get me to 130 meters, which is my nine iron, and I consistently can hit it on the green. Don't you think that it, will be a good thing for the guys to do as well? Not even think that is that is exactly that is exactly what I teach. I mean, obviously, sort of the high level guys, my tour guys, or whatever. The reason I lifted my arms, you gave me some goosebumps there. <laughs> that, that is exactly what that is exactly what to do, you know. Um, and then what you really want to do is 
probably want to have two yardages. So maybe one is with a, you know, pick your two favorite clubs, like a pitching wedge and a 56 or whatever. And you, whatever's a comfortable comfortable swing Bless and you. practice that a few times and you go okay cool with my 56 it's 80 meters with my lob uh, with my pitching wedge it's 110 and then on top of that what you do is every time you practice you warm up with those two shots so you become so good at those two shots okay and then anytime you're in trouble you hit to that shot on par fives you lap to that shot and on any par four you go how do i hit myself to one of those two distances and then every time you do that, you just go, cool, I've got this shot, hit it on the green, and you won or two putt. And that is how you win golf tournaments. Like, that is literally it. <laughs> and then you get somebody like me that's a short hitter that all my swings are the same. I don't have a different swing. Every swing is the same. Every shot is the same. Okay, boys. Um, while we're on course management, Cyril played with us. And um, I'm going to show this video. And th we could have this whole conversation again, but we don't need to because he'll show us that that's also not course management. Our feature hole for Sunday's league, uh, Sunday League One is the 13th par four stroke three. It's a 392 meter hole. Uh, down there at the bottom, uh, there's a little bit of water. It's about 278 odd meters out from the tee box. I'll go for my trusty seven iron, play it about 200 out for, for, from the goal and then take it from there. Just right off the fairway in a little bit of a rough, but not a bad result. The fairway opens up a little bit after this little hump I ended up on. Uh, this is an ideal spot for you to end up. A um, little bit short in the rough, about 200 meters out. So let's see how it goes from here. So after some adventures, uh, <laughs> playing a very funny shot, um, I ended up on the green for three. So let's see how that works out. On this hole, I'll be gladly walking off with the five. There we go. Well done. At least he got the five off a 30 handicap. But that's his saga. He will never play off a 30 again, especially after going winning at uh, Glen. Fista and then shooting minus two at the Summer Cup. Sorry, sorry, your handicap is gone. Okay, featured no, groups. Sorry, gents, we are not usually this long, but we had to spend 20 minutes introducing the season. So that's part of it. Featured groups, we enjoy these. Um, group A. Who's in Group A? Donnie Geldenes. Low handicap is Leonard Nell, Hanno Oysters and Ryan Esment and Rudy Matea. You guys are taking each other in this virtual group game so that's for bragging rights and see if we can get a point group b louis gerba nico roots Corneli rasmus gideon richter and randall chetty if you could you want to say who you think is going to win you're welcome to i think it's going to be tight i'm going to go with randall chetty apparently a little bird tells me that he had a practice round also during the week or on the weekend so he's taking it very very seriously right group uh second page group c and d He's coming up in a second. Group C is JP Atwood. Martinez Becker has pulled out since I've done this. So uh, I'll put somebody else in his place. Uh, Graham de Villiers, Wayne Jensen, Karuna Kuni. Myself is in Group D. Peter Zakaria, Ronnie Volher, Terek Wurbis, Skumon, and Leon Westhazen. These are pretty much similar handicaps. Okay, so the guys who feature in the groups will not feature in the head-to-heads. So the head-to-heads is like a Ryder Cup format. We want to see how many points these guys get. The captains have been selected. Who are the captains? In the red team, the captain is Sir Louis Jensen. You are captaining Ryan Jensen, Joan Faree, John Milo, Carl van der Linde, Paul Vickery, Gerard Maritz, who is watching. You will be in there. Dylan, you're watching. You'll be in there. Oki Brits, Paul Ricketts, you will also be in there. Right, uh, blue team. Peter Prinsler, you're captaining the, the, the blue team with Donna Perimel, Gerard Sneeman, Pernay Pandey, Ruben Swart, Richard Holman, Hansi Haman, Lawrence Haramsa, Yaku Jacobs, and Fat. You're in that team. So, good oh, luck to Mr. Lou Rickett. Edmund. Love it. Yeah, take them on. Take them on. Okay, right. The nitty gritty is done, but now we have to and we have to sh share the announcement with you. We have a new sponsor this year. Um, brand sponsor. And this is who they are. There's never really a good enough in golf. Uh, there's always better. The search for that perfection in a game which is really imperfectible. So I guess we're always 
on the journey to better. I'm definitely very meticulous about my preparation. I think I've been obsessive about my golf bag and what's in there probably since I was a kid, you know, taking everything out, stripping it down, putting it back together again. And it really makes me feel ready and feel prepared to uh, go on that journey. Golf gives the opportunity to spend lots of time walking between shots, thinking. Negativity is a part of human instinct. It's important to realize that that's okay. Let that in, replace that with good positivity, and good imagery, good visualization, good feelings. A great coach once told me that you shouldn't spend time trying to strengthen the weak because inevitably you'll end up weakening your strengths. So I concentrate on my path to better, which is improve my arm play, my wedge play, my chipping, and my putting, getting the ball in the hole. We're always on the journey to better, always looking forward, you know, a lot like we try to do in life. Hashtag the journey to better. Our hashtag is bigger and better. Thank you to Strixen. They are coming on board with us. They really Dylan, looking forward. From a to... different point of view at yeah, this he's, stage. He's, he's. Dylan, <laughs> different point of view, sideways. Dylan. So we're excited Dylan to have Strixen on board, just, gentlemen. And I know that we will support so them and down. we will support the brand of Strixen. They're really going to invest in the Duck of League. They want to show what it's all about. Let me show you what they're going to be sponsoring. There's a couple of guys on the chat line who's already excited. Paul Ricketts, who is a Strixen guy, is very, very happy with that. A very well-known brand. Here is what they are contributing to the Duck of Tour this year. As before, first to fifth place golf balls, close to the pin. Then in the majors, we're each getting Cleveland wedges. The winner, not each. The winner gets Cleveland wedges. Uh, right. <laughs> then the series Man, champions will win a year's supply of Strixen golf balls of their choice. How awesome is that? Thank you wow. very much. Yeah. Brilliant. That's, good. That's a lot of money you're saving on golf balls, That's chaps. Brilliant. And then the player of the season will win a set of irons and a Strixen golf bag. This irons can either be Strixen wow. or brilliant. Cleveland. So they've come to That's the party. Amazing. So we're <laughs> looking forward to supporting tricks and they'll have many activations uh, at certain events um, bring their brands and show them what the, let's show them love yeah, let's show them love. Yeah, yeah. yeah guys if, you know for you know for everybody out there you know you, you guys need to understand you know that prior the first price for play of the season you know that's basically almost a 22,000 rand price you know mm. so um, even as like the, the each league winner getting a, a year supply of golf balls you know that's sort of roughly 12 dozen golf balls that you're getting you know, so if, if that doesn't give you something to play for and to practice this year, you know, then I, then I don't know. But, um, you know, hats, hats off to Strixens um, for coming on board. You know, what you guys don't know is that Maz has been in talks with them this last week. And, you know, since the get-go, you know, um, Louise has been very interested, um, you know, in joining the league. You know, so really hats off to them. You know, I think that's a great goal. And everybody, geez, you know. It's like you guys are going to have to compete against me, you know. It's like uh, golf is going to take a front seat, uh, even if I have to bring my little boy with me to the golf course now. But uh, I'm playing golf, boys. And you have to change the cap you're wearing, and so do I. Hmm, I have to go get a new cap. I have to wear a Strixen cap now. And and those new yeah, Strixen irons are just quality. They're absolute world class. Yeah. Let me show you what uh, I was gifted today. Commented as well. He got a set from Donny the other day. This is what I was gifted to today. Oh. These are the new Zenstar X. So I'm going to give uh, one of these away. Tops, tops, tops. Next Ooh. on the next show. So next week, tune in. We are done. Fun, Thank you oh, for watching. A whole. Let me just Thank click you. this here. A whole almost hour. It is unbelievable. Thank you for watching. I think we had a record 50. We still got 51 players, uh, people watching, and hopefully it grows and grows because we have the information. This is our community. You join our community, we'll look after you. It's a brotherhood of awesomeness. So thanks for watching. Say goodbye, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Yes, goodbye. We'll see you on Bye. Sunday. The player pack goes out tomorrow. Um, um, I'm going to play this just to say goodbye and while you switch off. Bye-bye.